Good day. My purpose in this video today is to raise awareness and educate folks on an issue which will affect all of us FPV pilots in some way in the near future. Whether it affects us in a positive way or a negative way, how much it affects us and when could actually depend on your level of involvement with the issue. So in today's video, I'll briefly explain what the issue is, how it's going to affect you, and I'll show you how you can get involved to help shape a positive outcome for everyone. Let's get started. The topic is this. On December 26, the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, or the FAA, made available a document called the Notice of Proposed Rulemaking, also referred to as an NPRM, on the remote identification of unmanned aircraft systems. The keyword here is proposed, and on Tuesday, December 31st, it was published and open for your comments on the document for a period of 60 days. I placed a link to the complete proposed rule in the video description below. It's a lengthy document, however, if you only read pages 7 through 18, beginning with the executive summary, you'll have a good understanding of the concept behind it. And remember, you can always search the document for specific keywords which may be of interest to you. Why should you care? Well, if you're an FPV pilot, for at least the following three reasons. And here shortly, I'll explain the remote ID concept of operations. The first reason is this document establishes a requirement for government-required remote identification equipment installed on your quadcopter if it weighs more than 0.55 pounds or 250 grams all up weight, including the battery. And it places your quadcopter, or what the FAA refers to as an unmanned aircraft, into three categories based on the type of remote ID equipment you have installed. Standard remote ID, limited remote ID, or no remote ID. The description of these categories can be found on pages 13 to 17 of the document. Two, the proposed rule stipulates whether or not you must apply for remote ID certification compliance with the FAA, and that depends upon how your quadcopter was built. This document defines the design and production or the build requirements on pages 150 through 156. Among those are UAS kits on page 152, which are subject to remote ID compliance certification. The document also defines what's termed an amateur-built unmanned aerial system on page 152, and that's one in which the person building the quadcopter fabricates and assembles more than 50% of it. This type of quadcopter would not be required to comply with the design and production requirements. However, keyword here is fabricates. Another type of build which is described in the document is an unmanned aerial system assembled from prefabricated parts. You can find that on page 153. This is an unmanned aerial system, or an FPV quadcopter, assembled entirely from prefabricated parts, which is how most FPV quads are built currently. This type of FPV quadcopter, assembled from prefabricated parts, is subject to remote ID compliance certification according to the proposed rule. And the third reason is it dictates where you can fly based on those three categories which are mentioned earlier, which are defined by what type of remote ID equipment you have installed. Standard, limited, or none. For the limited remote ID category, the quadcopter will be designed and produced to only fly within 400 feet of the operator in all directions. For quadcopters over 250 grams all up weight with no remote ID equipment, this proposed rule restricts flight to fixed locations previously approved by the FAA within a 12-month period of the effective date of the final rule only. These FAA pre-approved sites are defined in the document as FAA-recognized identification areas. So why is this being proposed? According to the FAA, remote identification of unmanned aerial systems is necessary to ensure public safety and the safety and efficiency of the airspace of the United States. And this remote ID of unmanned aircraft systems is a key element in the UAS traffic management or UTM overall system architecture intended to enable civilian low-altitude airspace and unmanned aircraft system operations such as the commercial drone industry for package delivery, search and rescue, and agricultural monitoring. Therefore, according to the FAA, the implementation of UAS Remote ID may in the future support beyond visual line-of-sight operations for those unmanned aircraft which fall into the standard Remote ID category. Please keep in mind this is the U.S. version of UAS traffic management. However, this same sort of approach is either being considered or implemented in many other regions of the world, such as the European Union's U-Space. Here's a graphical representation of how the FAA proposes to implement this remote ID of unmanned aircraft systems. This real-time, in-flight, remote identification would be required for all quads, whether they are for recreational or commercial purposes, except those which are not required to be registered under the FAA's existing rules, 
such as those which weigh less than 0.55 pounds or 250 grams. The first method is called standard remote ID. This method consists of and requires the remote ID information being transmitted both over the internet and also broadcast from the quadcopter itself over radio waves while in flight. The remote ID information being transmitted would consist of a unique serial number, the latitude, longitude, and altitude of both the pilot and the quadcopter as well as a timestamp. The second method is called limited remote ID, and this method consists of and requires the remote ID information being transmitted over the internet only. However, in this case, the quadcopter must remain within 400 feet of the pilot in all directions. The same remote ID information is passed over the internet, as is the case with the standard remote ID method. The third option, which isn't really a method of remote ID, is when the unmanned aircraft system, to include the comlinks and components to control the quad, is unable to remotely identify. This could be because it is unable to be updated to meet the necessary performance requirements, or because it is what this FAA proposed rule describes as amateur built. In this case, the quad can only be flown within an FAA pre-approved site called an FAA recognized identification area. These types of sites can only be requested of the FAA by a community-based organization within 12 months of the final rule publication, and the quad must be flown within this area while maintaining visual line of sight. So that, in a nutshell, is what the proposed rule for remote ID of unmanned aircraft systems is and how the FAA intends to implement it. Now, how can you get involved and perhaps shape the final rule? Here are three ways, and I'd recommend you take advantage and do all three. If you know of any other constructive ways to get involved, please share them by contacting the FPV Freedom Coalition, of which I'm a registered founding member, through their website at fpvfc.org and or their Facebook page. First of all, you can make comments to the proposed rule as an individual directly through the regulations.gov site, and I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. Secondly, you can provide any comments you have to the FPV Freedom Coalition for consideration and consolidation into the FPVFC's official response to the FAA. To provide comments to the FPVFC for consideration and consolidation, submit them to this site no later than January 31st. I've included the link to the site in the video description below, as well as in my pinned comment at the top of the comments section. And third, you can contact your U.S. Congressional representative in the House for your district, as well as your U.S. Senators. Remember, these individuals are in their current positions to represent you. Here are the links you can use to get their contact information, and I've also provided these links in the video description below. Now, going back to our first option of making comments as an individual directly, you can do so by going to this regulation.gov site. While you're here, you can click on the Learn tab, click on the Proposed Rule button, and take a look at what happens during this stage of the process. You can also take a look at subsequent buttons to see what the actions are during each of these stages. To make your actual comments, use the docket number FAA-2019-1100. Now keep in mind, the FAA posts your comments without edit, including any personal information you may provide. Put the docket number in the search box and click search. This will then take you to this page, Docket ID FAA 2019-1100, Remote ID of Unmanned Aircraft Systems. And at this point, you can click this button, which says Comment Now. And this is the form that you fill out. You've got three tabs, Your Information, Your Preview, and Your Receipt. In addition to that, you've got a commenter's checklist in PDF format, which I've also linked in the video description below. It just gives you some tips for submitting effective comments. And this block is where you put your comment. Any files you want to use as supporting documentation, you can upload your personal information and whether or not you want to provide your contact information or if you're submitting on behalf of a third party. And these are the types of categories that you can select. It's really a fairly simple process. Now you have a choice. Do what you can to shape the final rule or do nothing and hope it turns out okay for you and others. I, for one, have always believed and I personally know one person can make a difference, and together we can make a big difference. So you've now got a fairly good idea of what this FAA proposed rule for remote identification of unmanned aircraft is, how the FAA intends to implement it, and how it will affect you as an FPV pilot. You also now know three different ways in which you can get involved to help shape the final FAA rule. I hope you found this information useful and will make the time to take constructive action to ensure the continued fun and freedom of FPV flight. Thank you for your time. Clear skies, friends.